Mining wasn't for everyone. Some of the new residents looked across the large grassy plains and decided it would be a perfect place to raise cattle and sheep. The ranchers became a food supplier for the miners and the businesses that supported them. As it turned out, the high altitude hay raised in South Park gained a world-class reputation. Ranching continues in South Park, but not without some interesting high altitude challenges. It's the growing season. It's a harsh winter up at this altitude can get as low as 60 below. Last winter it was 45 below and it gets a little frosty out here. You have to watch out for high altitude sickness with the cattle. They acclimate with breeding and there's also testing of your bulls and your cattle to see if they are uh, compatible with high altitude. But you can breed it out. You know, grass is at a premium up here. Well, there's only one cutting here, and it's a different grass. It's a saline grass. Um, we run along the Salt Creek, and so there's a lot of al alkaline and saline grasses up at this altitude. The Tsar of Russia supposedly imported the hay for his horses. He was so impressed with it, with it when he was over here on his train car, you know, hunting buffalo. You can see on the ground, it looks like a high mineral content. You know, the tundra is very tender and, and uh, it grows very short. It doesn't look like much grass, but that short grass has a lot of protein in it for the cattle. They enjoy it. They prefer the short grass over the tall grass. It's just taking care of animals and being a good steward of the land. It seems like the last standing uh, example of the way it was in the late 1800s, you know, after the Civil War and what was going on back then. It's a visual reference to it. And that's why it's important to maintain it and, and keep it operating as a working ranch. And it's what made, made us Americans is this journey out into the West. So it's be a shame to see it disappear and it slowly is getting eaten up. A gentleman by the name of Charles Hall and Mary Nye, they traveled together in the same wagon train in uh, 1858 across the states and into the territory. Just a few years later after coming to this area, they, uh, they wed and homesteaded this ranch in 1862. The main function of the ranch was for the procurement of the salt from the natural salt spring and that went on for about 10 years successfully until the railroads came in in the early 70s and brought in a cheaper way of getting the salt. They used a technology called pan and kettle. The longest part where the chimney was on the end housed a 100 foot stove. And then the kettles were set on top of that and they boiled down the salt water. Most specifically, we're at the source of where the salt comes up for us um, in the form of salt water. What we do know is there were at some point seas and the seas are no more and have evaporated, but what's left of the, the sea salt now um, comes up from underground, and this is what we have. One of the things that makes it most special is how it hasn't changed in much over the years. Because I think it speaks without words, and a person can develop a reality with past generations without having to say much. <laughs>